I have three o'clock. Councillors, you have folks. I call the regular schedule for the special council meeting for November the 4th to order. With that, I'm looking for a motion to adopt the agenda. Thank you, Councillor Starling. Discussion? All in favor? Uh, motion to adopt the regular council meeting of October 28th. The public hearing uh, for October 28th. And a special council meeting of October 29th. No announcements, no delegations, no business arising, no correspondence, no old business. <coughs> Our new business uh, is introduction of the consultants who will be doing some work in the Big Eddy and water system. And then an open discussion with representatives from the Big Eddy water system itself to understand what the consultants uh, will be doing, what their uh, role will be, but how this may move forward with resolution of some of the issues in the beginning and who is responsible for what and how it will affect both the city system as it is now and the Big Eddy system. So there's a number of decision points. The hiring of the consultants at this time and the, the speed of which we're moving is largely dependent upon the timing windows for Bill Canada funding in February. So if we're going to avail ourselves of Bill Canada funds for this project, for this system, we have a number of decisions to make between now and then. That's not to fetter that decision-making process. So the consulting work that we're hiring now is largely in preparation and to get a better understanding of what the system is and how it works. Uh, it's done by the city under general revenue and will be done in cooperation with the Big Eddy Water System. So Mr. Thomas has a short presentation. I would ask Mr. Hall from the Big Eddy Water System, you're more than welcome to come and join us at the table if you wish to have a clear dialogue. Sure. Uh, what I'm looking for is just an open dialogue back and forth between us. Uh, there's no decisions to be made, it's simply understanding what the consultants are doing. Where are we Right here from the Big Eddy Water Promotion. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Welcome. The pay's not very good, but the... Uh, so Mr. Thomas first, and then maybe you could introduce your guests. Yeah. Your Worship, I'd like to introduce um, Jim Rowe and Sean from um, MMM. These, uh, these guys, I've spent the, spent the morning with them today. We've, uh, we've had a tour around the Big Eddy and we've met with uh, our operators um, looking at what we know about the Big Eddy system and um, just from the discussions that our operators have had with, uh, with Sam who operates the system and um, yeah, basically today was an introduction, sort of a kickoff meeting for the, uh, for the work that is to proceed here um, and uh, obviously this, this discussion was also an important first step where uh, Council and the Beginning of Water Works have an opportunity to ask the consultants those, those um, questions up front before we get started into the process. So questions on what the process looks like, um, you know, how long things are going to take, uh, what we're going to look, look at along the way, who will be involved, um, those sort of things. So um, Cindy, would you be able to turn on that, uh, just so that we've got a map to look at of, uh, of the system here. And um, the, uh, the Big A system was I'll give a very brief um, overview of it just for, for uh, Council's benefit here. But Big Eddy Waterworks was, um, was initiated in the 50s. And uh, the current system, as you see, was uh, it is basically a system that was, uh, I guess, inherited by the Big Eddy Waterworks from work that Hydro did on behalf of Big Eddy. So there's, there's uh, there's uh, wells over here, and there's a reservoir over here. That's, yep. a, that's a reservoir. Yes, so the, the reservoir here and the wells, wells over here. Um, in terms of uh, the rest of the network, uh, Big Eddy Water has worked on, worked on the system, but it's pretty much the same network as it was with some minor extensions and improvements along the way. 
So uh, in terms of what our uh, what the consulting team is going to look at is really working out what we know about what's in the ground um, first up, and that will be uh, at the moment we're we're planning on uh, our um, city water utility operator Doug um, Pendergast to be meeting with um, the bigger uh, staff over there for the for their water work system and just make sure that this map that we have from the city's system actually matches what um, what Big Eddie knows of, um, is in the ground. For instance, this map that the city has, I know there's a pipe down here, we just don't have it in our system. So it's, it's sort of a knowledge um, gathering uh, exercise and just making sure that whatever we, can, whatever we can, we can transfer into a digital model to be useful later in terms of uh, doing actual engineering modeling on the system. So, uh, Jim, would you be able to hop up and uh, maybe walk through what this study process looks looks like? Um, also, councillors <coughs> and uh, and Don, if you have any questions along the way, just please ask. So, I think um, we've been officially retained uh, three or four days ago. So, we're just really just jumping into this. Uh, typically what we'll do is we'll come up on a day like this, we'll do a start up meeting, uh, meeting with Mike, quite often the operations staff, and this is a separate purveyor, so we'll quite often meet with them, and then um, we'll go over any background material that's, uh, that's readily available, and just kind of get a history of uh, the water system and uh, how it's been operating. Uh, we typically then would go out and do a site review, uh, which uh, Mike and I and Sean did um, basically a couple of hours ago. So we did get over, we saw the pump houses, we did get out to the reservoir, uh, we drove through the community, we saw that there's um, everything from uh, mobile homes to some light industrial, uh, and ground pits, uh, you know, kind of everything in between. It's uh, certainly a rural area uh, for the most part. Um, so that's our starting point. Uh, it's, I guess, based on what Mike was telling us, I think it's probably from the 50s for the most part, mm -hmm. which is pretty common in the interior of BC. Uh, there was a lot of uh, water systems went in post-World War II, uh, late 40s uh, through the 50s. Uh, one of the challenges with water systems at that age is uh, the various material types um, of pipe going in the ground. Uh, quite often reaching their life expectancy. So that's one of the things we'll have to consider as we, as we move forward. Um, beyond that, what we start to do is, um, like Mike mentioned, I think, is we'll start to develop a model to see if the pipes are big enough and if the storage is enough and if, if the, um, the, uh, the well system is suitable. Um, once we kind of get through that stage and, and work with operation staff through that process, we start looking at the financials. And uh, I'm sure everyone's heard of infrastructure deficit. That's been a fairly popular term over the last 10 years. And it's pretty standard in, in most of the places, or maybe in all the places we work with, that uh, reserves have not really kept up. Uh, so I can't speak to the big Eddie's water system because, like I say, we just started on this. But it's our experience that uh, reserves uh, haven't typically kept up with the needs of the system. So that's something that we look at. Um, beyond that, we'll, we'll uh, draft up a report and it'll come back to uh, through Mike, and uh, that will be the first kind of first cut at it. And what that will be is uh, an assessment. We'll give up the basic financials, you know, the shape and the, uh, what sort of financial shape the system is in. Um, we're, we're also going to compare this to uh, City of Revelstoke standards. Uh, and City of Revelstoke standards are, uh, without having seen them, I'm sure pretty consistent with most other municipalities. Uh, they're pretty, probably fairly high compared to what most. Uh, systems from the 40s and 50s were built to. So that's something we're going to have to look at. Um, <clears throat> and then beyond that, what we're going to do is start to figure out long-term capital replacement costs. Um, 
understand there's a few hundred homes. Is that right? A couple hundred, two, three hundred homes. So we'll uh, we'll do those calculations, and then we'll from that point so we'll know how much a replacement value is, whether it's replaced next year or in 30 years, and then work backwards how much per connection that, that looks like. Uh, with the understanding that the Bill Canada Fund is the goal, uh, then we'll start to do some calculations to see uh, is this, if it does come to a replacement of any sort, uh, what are the financials on that? And then we'll work with the city to determine uh, where those funds might come from. So, so will the city then be providing growth estimates for the population and industrial base to begin? Uh, Your Worship, the, um, certainly uh, Dean and um, looking at the OCP, we'll be working, uh, working through that as part of the, the uh, report. In terms of what is over there at the moment, uh, this, is, this is the zoning map. Um, I didn't pull up the OCP map. But uh, basically the yellow areas are residential <coughs> and the purple areas are industrial. And then um, out, uh, out here, this is the ground pit out here. Um, the, the commercial areas are sort of the uh, pinky red areas out here. So it's a mix of commercial and industrial out there. Um, sometimes when you're looking at, at, at these sort of uh, pieces, well, certainly for the build, building, uh, new building Canada fund, one of the requirements is that the is that the works that are going to be installed meet the requirements of uh, the growth projections or the OCP um, zoning that's going to be out there in the future. So, um, you know, the, the federal government doesn't want to be uh, giving money to communities that's a short-term investment. They're looking at uh, long-term investments for. Uh, what the community sees as the long-term goal for, for an area like this. So if we were going to be um, putting in new infrastructure, the provincial and federal government's requirement would be that it's size, you know, a according to those, those growth projections. Thank you. Councillors, questions? Uh, what kind of timeline are we looking at? Uh, I do have a schedule here. So Today's basically the start of the meeting. Um, our goal is to have a draft report back to the city within a month. Um, and then we start getting into the Christmas uh, season. Um, final report submittal January 16th. Uh, the city would then have another week to review and then we'd incorporate whatever comments um, we, we received back with a final uh, project report January 30th. Mr. Johnson? Would we expect to get um, options? Um, like Mike just talked about meeting certain standards, but would there be, when I say we, we the stakeholders, the Getty, everybody else, um, you know, you could do a quick and dirty like this, or you could do a full meal deal like this, and that sort of thing? Um, there are two kind of maybe governing bodies, I guess. Interior health is, is number one. Right. Um, I don't think, if we make any recommendations, it will be consistent with what interior health is wanting to see. I don't think we would ever cut corners on that side. Yeah, right. I can add to the interior health piece as well in terms of the uh, Canada Fund. Um, the, any infrastructure that is uh, to be constructed under the New Building Canada Fund must meet the Canadian Drinking Water Guidelines. So you must bring the system to that stage to receive funding. Uh, so the second thing would be the fire operators survey, and they have certain standards. Um, I believe the city could choose to have a lesser standard. Uh, does that affect your insurance rates? Is that it yeah, it can. Um, and then, of course, anything to do with the city file. Uh, so the city could choose to say, no, we want everything per bylaw by all standards, or the city can choose to uh, lessen those standards. I guess that's a city decision. Uh, the one goalpost that doesn't move is interior health. Right. Mm -hmm. um, what knowledge do we have about pipe we have in the ground? There is some historic mapping. Um, 
And I think, for the most part, I would, I would maybe guess just from experience on, on, on working with other systems, probably 70%, 70 to 80% of that is probably quite accurate. Uh, when we start getting into thing like, things like extensions, so maybe the old map has a certain area, but then maybe the system is extended. Sometimes those records are not um, always marked down. Uh, you know, maybe it was in someone's head who retired 10 years ago, those types of things. Um, for the most part, if you have a map, say from the 1950s, and unless there's some knowledge that it's changed, it's usually pretty reliable. Professor Bennett, question. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I guess I can assume you've done situations like this a number of times before. Yes. So, what what are you finding on average for systems like ours? Uh, the pipes are all shot. They're eighty percent shot. They're fifty percent shot. Can you, can you, can you, now I'm not asking you. To, sure. I'm not asking you what's there because I know you don't know yet. But what's your experience in similar circumstances? I will say it depends on two things: the soil conditions and the groundwater conditions. Mm -hmm. So in the right situation, say if it were clay with high groundwater and an iron pipe, I could probably tell you that 60 years is shot. Um, I do know that the, or I've been told the groundwater does come up and down in that area, uh, but for the most part it's more of a sandy soil. Um, so iron pipes are, are a little easier to predict, but I understand there's uh, asbestos cement pipes over there. I don't want to say you can roll the dice. You can take out 60-year-old asbestos cement pipe and it can be just like new. Uh, or it can be brittle or it can be soft and you can just almost crush it with your hands. So, um, but just life cycles at 60 years, 60 to 80 years, uh, other than PVC, which hasn't been around that long, um, that's starting to get the life cycle in. So do we know at this point yet whether the pipes are big enough, that's been kind of an issue in this whole thing. Um, I would say, just briefly looking at the map, that some of them are not. Yes, uh, mostly because of the commercial and industrial areas. Uh, they have a higher fire demand. Um, so as soon as you start talking industrial, you'd like to see 10 and 12 inch pipes. Mm -hmm. um, Loot 6 inch uh, pipes within residential areas are usually super large. And that's important with insurance rates and fire protection. Yes, absolutely. Well, thank you, Worship. Uh, my question is more for staff, and I know we're well into this now, and I'm glad that's happening, but I'm just wondering about the formal acquisition process and when will that uh, start and where are we at with that? You Worship, under the, uh, again, under the Building Canada Fund, because that's really driving this, this timeline um, at the moment. In terms of getting this report done. This is definitely the first step. We have applied for uh, infrastructure planning grant funding for this study. Um, the, the timelines with the Building Canada Fund on the acquisition, so there, there's, there's some requirements in there that are pretty straightforward. It says uh, from the date of, uh, of approval of the grant, the Building Canada grant, if, if you are approved, the city must commit by, um, by resolution of council that within six months of that date of approval, you will hold either a referendum or an alternate approval process to, to uh, do the borrowing for that project if there's borrowing required, or if it's an amalgamation of a system like this, it would also be um, a, a utility acquisition uh, referendum or alternate approval process. So within six months of, of that, um, that's, the, that's the latest that, uh, that they would want you to do it. We could always do it sooner. Um, once this report is complete, we'll have enough information to go out to the public and, um, and people will have an understanding of, you know, potentially if, if this is the route that we're going, what upgrades would be required, what those costs would be, and what the impact on water rates would be for, uh, for the residents in the Big Eddy if they chose to um, you know, to, to vote in that way. Um, if they chose to not vote uh, to amalgamate with the city, they still have options. Interior Health would still hold their requirements up pretty high. Um, they might have some time to do it. 
the difficulty is that they may not be eligible for grant funding uh, without that help from the city um, side of things because the city is actually a body that can receive this provincial and federal um, funding directly. Um, yeah, and in, in terms of options, and uh, Councilman Johnson asked about options, there may be options such as um, leaving it as an entirely separate system from the city system or joining it across a bridge or across under the river or something like that. So there are definitely options. And some of these things will we'll be doing very high level cost estimates and saying, we've really got to, got to work out whether that's even necessary first. And if, if for some reason it's necessary either to build a treatment plan over there, well, we should seriously look at whether we should just be using our own um, city water across a bridge or under the, under the river instead of building a whole new treatment plan over there. So certainly there will be some options um, reviewed as those sort of trigger points come out. But to be clear, the first decision after this report yeah. is for the residents of the Big Eddy, the 96 residents, is to decide what they want to do with their system. It's theirs, it's not the city's. You wish the city. The city. Yes, the, the city can still apply for this infrastructure funding. However, if we were to apply for the funding, we're only able to apply for one project per intake, um, assuming there's an intake every year for 10 years under this program. But if we did apply for this, this particular project and the residents later decided that they didn't want to do that project um, through a referendum, voted it down, then uh, the city would have missed that opportunity for that first year of infrastructure funding for potentially another project. Mr. Hall, do you have any questions? Uh, do you, you need uh, somebody to walk through the system with you? We're, we're uh, planning on working with Sam, so Doug Pendergast will work directly with Sam to, um, to get those details, walk through a map. Sam's, my understanding is he's got in his head most of those changes that may have been made. Um, I know that your map is probably more updated than our map here, so certainly um, having Doug walk through operator to operator and just um, and getting that information down onto paper that we can then um, give to give to Jim and his guys to uh, to continue the work. But um, certainly we're hoping to do that in the next week here. Yeah, yeah we we'll include GPSing of those points as well, so it's a digital map rather than hand drawn. And and some of these things, such as the location of the reservoir on our map, it's clearly wrong. Um, you know, we were up there today, and it's not quite there. It's actually a couple hundred meters away from that, but that's okay. Um, when it comes to actually replacing the infrastructure and knowing what those lengths of pipe are, as long as it's at this stage, as, as long as we're within sort of that 10%, we're pretty good. Um, but once we get closer into design work, we need to we really need to know where that pipe is in the ground before we decide to do a design of it. Um, but that that pipe from from the reservoir down, it probably just goes straight down through the forest and, I don't know, it, you know, we'd have to work out exactly where it is and if we needed to do anything with it before uh, we go and design anything. Mr. Hall, anything else? That's the ones on the reservoir, right? Mm -hmm. There's drawings on those. Perfect, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So a number of big decisions after this report. Uh, I'm just wondering, Mr. Hall, um, is there a need for a stakeholders meeting just to explain to you? I've got a read back called Hardy Hurry. Okay. Is there a need for us to have a stakeholders meeting with the Big Eddy ratepayers just to tell them what's going on? Just, or is it too early at this time? Uh, oh, I would say it, when there's a little more concrete. Okay. Uh, information to give them. I mean, okay. What's the uh, report comes we out? have to keep them informed though because they get the final vote. So. Right. It's all yeah. Okay. So we'll just wait till we get the report to move forward on that. Uh, I haven't, other than the usual few that uh, are on my doorstep complaining, uh, most people are. Uh, kind of in favor of getting something done. Okay, that's good news. 
the feeling I've got so far. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Mr. Hall, I have heard. It's a good first step to the um, couple of decision points before spring. Yeah, so, so we should begin. That was uh, we're looking for a report before the end of January, so that we can make a decision for the build, build, new building Canada fund, which uh, the first intake closes on the 18th of February. So that, that's sort of our timing. We're going to be pretty busy in uh, at the end of January, beginning of February, just making sure that we've got all the information required for the grant application, if that's where we're going. So. But that's assuming that it has become a city system or will become a city system within that six months. That's correct. Yep. If it doesn't, then Bill Canada doesn't apply. Uh, if, if it doesn't become a city system or if the referendum were to fail, then uh, we are not eligible for the Building Canada Fund. Thank you, Your Worship. Mike, maybe just a reminder about what the, what, what the maximum uh, could be obtained from Bill Canada. Uh, okay, so over 10 years, the province and the federal government each have put in, I think, $113 million each. So that's $226 million, I think, over 10 years. Now, for municipalities, it's two-thirds funding. So that would mean that you've got projects that are approximately $340,000 worth of projects over 10 years. And this is the Small Communities Fund. So communities um, under 100,000 residents. So if you do the numbers, it's not a huge amount of money, but um, I think we've talked about you know, strategy here, what, what, what we should do in terms of um, you know, applying for this. I think just about every municipality is trying to work out how, how they can maximize their return on, on this uh, funding opportunity. And um, getting a really good project in, in the first year of funding, seems like a pretty good plan. So if we can, if we can have good backup data, if, if it fits with the OCP, if it fits with our long-term plans and our community vision, um, these are all things that are really important. Having, having the letter from Interior Health that supports this project is a really big piece too, and, and I've got that. So um, yeah, in terms of the money, there's not that much money, but I think we're more likely to get more money if we've got a really good project. So, Mr. Thomas, can you or Mr. Engels explain the difference between the utility rates and the funding for water systems on the east side and the water systems on the west side, as opposed to, to general taxation? It's a, so, if I understand you correctly, Your Worship, um, just, just to explain that, the, the, water, the water rates that water users pay here goes to fund the water utility and the operating and capital costs for the, for the, uh, for the water function only. So um, nothing comes out of general taxation to fund the water utility. It's all funded by uh, the water rate payments. So somebody, and I do know somebody in Arrow Heights that is not on city water would not be paying the utility fees for water. If they're not using water. So that it's those that are on the system on the east side of the river that have paid for that system. Right. And those in the Big Eddy have paid for their system through a separate entity. That's correct. Mr. Justin? Short one, I hope. Um, you mentioned that it has to sort of go in line with the OCP, and our OCP is not made yesterday. Um, a little bit before yesterday. Is there anything in there that should cause us concern or that maybe needs to be changed or tuned up uh, before we start going on this? I'll have Dean review that. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and my understanding of, the, um, of where the provincial program um, of this is really they need to see that council is fully behind this project and if you have if you have supporting documents or a long-term plan to, to do these to do these upgrades or in the case if, if this you know if this uh, study comes back and says there's an, an absolutely dire need to do this these are all things that will really support it the OCP is <coughs> a piece of that um, in terms of uh, you know in terms of growth uh, in the big eddy if um, 
you know, if we want more industrial or commercial or, or higher density of residential over there, um, we need to look at the water, whether it's city water or big any water, and, um, and you know, just just to make sure that we've got the capacity to, uh, to to review that. So the other piece that comes up with that, and it's sort of separate from the water, is if we were looking at really long term, we might want to look at sewer as well at some point. And uh, you know, if you're if you're over there putting in new pipes, it may actually be timely to, to be considering putting in a sewer system at the same time. And that's something that uh, Jim and I had a brief discussion about and might be able to get a, a very high level you know, current number on, on what it would look like over there. Uh, certainly we've got some elevations so we could work out if it's feasible or possible, um, how you would do it, what sort of system and just really high level numbers there. But that, at that point, council can then decide do we want to go out um, to referendum to ask for both water and sewer or just water only? Because if, if it's too expensive or if, it, if it's looking like there's not really a need for that from the growth projections, then it's not worth even going there at this stage. Yeah. So in your work for Ontario Health, will you be looking at the water quality issues as well as water? You worship the, the um, source protection plan is currently underway by Big Eddy. They've actually engaged a consultant to do that separately. Um, and very qualified consultant doing great work um, on the looking at the well source. Um, so I was involved in a, in a stakeholders meeting for that. It's sort of like a technical advisory committee meeting. Um, so there were some ministry representatives there, um, some Big Eddy representatives and myself from the city. And uh, in terms of the water quality piece, in terms of the source, that has been, um, that, that's been dealt with and it's certainly information that will feed into this report. That's a whole other study, um, that's a source protection study um, that thankfully um, you know, uh, Big Eddy is already working on. The other piece is um, looking at the quality in the system, so maintaining a chlorine residual in the system to make sure that that water has a residual disinfectant um, to keep the water safe right to that last customer. And um, one of the reasons why um, Interior Health has, has requested a, a drinking water advisory um, for the Big Eddy is because there's some challenges in maintaining that. And getting a little bit technical now, but not too much, I can explain sort of why. So over here, this is the uh, this is where the wells are, and that's also where the chlorine is is uh, is pumped into the system as well. So the reservoirs over here, and what happens is the water comes around and gets to the reservoir as well as directly feeding into the into the residences. So any water that makes it into the reservoir is going to stay there while those while those um, pumps are still running. So the pumps are directly pumping the, the chlorine, um, you know, the, the water that has a good residual over here. At the same time, the chlorine is decaying in the reservoir. So like you lose that chlorine residual over time in the reservoir. So, so now, if you turn the pumps off, the reservoir starts draining down. And so at that point, you may not have the greatest water coming out. And so it's, it's a system design issue, and it's certainly something that um, if you were going to design the system today, you try to work out how to minimize that effect. You'd actually have a separate line that goes from the pumps to the reservoir and then another line out of the reservoir to, to the system. So you're always using that reservoir as, as your main feed instead of straight from the pumps. And this is, again, Jim will be able to tell you, this is common for systems of this age. This wasn't, it, it wasn't a design that um, was common uh, even 30 years ago. This is something that um, utilities have sort of discovered almost by accident because they're finding this very problem. So it's, it's something that we may look at as part of this study is, is there, is there another way or like the most cost effective way to maintain that chlorine residual in that system? Um, and that's, that's certainly a, a very high objective here because interior health requirements um, really drive uh, our applicability for the funding. So as I remember, the, the pumps in the reservoir were built in about 1981 by BC Hydro. 
But at that time, the reservoir was being used as a groundwater source reservoir. The pumps were backup, so it's the system the surface, operation would change as well. You wish that's the surface water Before reservoir. Before that, just gravity out of building the Yeah. 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 Any questions, comments? Sorry, anything? Anything? No. No, no. We hope for the best. <laughs> well, thank you very much for your help. Thanks for attending today. Uh, we've got a few more other items to run through. Thank you. Uh, communications. Yeah. Run through these. Please call me if you've got anything. Item A is the community policing report uh, for September. Your hey, Worship, uh, September was a bit of a concern for us in that uh, we had a great number of uh, break and enters, a lot of thefts from yards. Uh, we did a lot of surveillance. Did recover some of the items, but uh, things did sort of settle down, so we're content with where the uh, crime level has gone back to. So, thank you. Thank you. Social Development Committee minutes of September 17th. Economic committee minutes of July 21st. Okay, before I entertain a motion to step into in camera pursuant to 9.1 ANC of the community charter regarding the personnel matter, I'd like to note that the publication of information in local media concerning the city's community economic development services over the past few, few days has been very stressful for many. We regret that this matter is taken on the public forum utilizing personal information, sometimes with inaccurate assumptions. All employees are highly valued. The city respects and ensures the privacy and rights of our employees and does not normally comment on personal matters. The city of Revelstoke emphasizes that Mr. Mason is, continues to be a valued city employee. The economic development function is important to the ongoing operation and vitality of the city. The city has benefited greatly from its leadership, contributions have led to completion of projects and growth opportunities in our community. There is no doubt, no question. There is an unfortunate situation that requires resolution. The publication of information has been very stressful for Mr. Mason and his family, and at this time he is on medical leave. The city requests privacy for the family to be respected. And the privacy has not been compromised by this council, myself, or staff. So with that, I'll entertain a motion to move in camera pursuant to 90.1 A and C of the community charter. Let's make some points of starting. All in favor? Are you not going to entertain questions from the press, Your Worship? Not today. 